What's up, friends? Welcome back to day five of the 12 days of Coachmas. Over these 12 days, I'm gonna be reacting to and discussing various content and concepts within the coaching industry. If you're just jumping in today, I'll have an entire playlist linked right here so you can get caught up. Today's video is gonna be a little bit different than the other content we've covered so far in this series, mostly because it basically just centers around something that I've been spending a lot of time thinking about lately. And that is, why do people so passionately spend their time defending celebrities, public figures, and people they don't know. Now this first became really clear to me in the original video I did about Brooke Castillo and the Life Coach School, where people who were students or former students were basically saying that my video was wildly incorrect. They were leaving comments suggesting that I was just trying to ride on her success. They were saying that I was just jealous and full of rage and frustration, which honestly that comment in particular made me laugh out loud. And I mean, this was just the start. Since then, I have had so many comments on that video and other videos that I've done on this channel of people accusing me that I'm uneducated, jealous, misinformed, and so on. Which is fine, we can all have different opinions. In fact, I don't expect everyone to agree with everything that I say. That's kind of the reason why I have this channel. Really, the whole purpose of all of the content that I make is to offer a different perspective in an industry where people are basically encouraging you to take what they say at face value. And so you don't have to watch my content and agree with everything I say. In fact, I think it's probably healthier if you don't do that. But these comments and comments of this nature in particular really just got me thinking about why people are so obsessed with defending people they don't know. And because this video is part of the 12 Days of Coach Miss series, it is gonna be a little bit shorter and we're probably just gonna scratch the surface of this topic. But nonetheless, I thought it would be fun to share a few of my thoughts before we jump into the video. I do wanna give a big shout out to my VIP channel members, as well as my two billionaire tier members, Gym Lessons and Reaction Therapy. Thank you both so much for being here. And on that note, thank you to all of my channel members as well as my subscribers. I appreciate each and every one of you who takes the time to watch my content so, so much. Now let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay, so first and foremost, the biggest thing I think is at play here is the nature of parasocial relationships. And if you're not familiar, a parasocial relationship is basically a one-sided relationship where one person extends the emotional energy, interest, and time in the other party when that other party is completely unaware of the other person's existence. Just like how half of TikTok seems to be obsessed with Taylor Swift and they like think she's their best friend or big sister and they're so invested in her new relationship, Taylor Swift doesn't know you and she doesn't reciprocate those same feelings. The same goes with coaching programs and the people who run coaching programs and those who invest in those programs. In my opinion, the coaching industry is basically founded on the nature of parasocial relationships. Most coaches aren't just selling a service. They're selling a lifestyle and a brand and an entire identity that's wrapped up in that. And while this can be a powerful way to build connection with your audience, it's also a really gray area that kind of blurs the lines between professional relationships and personal relationships. And I think the type of content that a lot of these personal brands share or coaches share sort of fosters this feeling of closeness and a sense of connection with the audience. And so what I feel this does is it encourages followers to not just admire the person's expertise, but also to desire to embody their entire lifestyle almost. I see this person as successful, therefore I want to embody their behaviors, their lifestyle, therefore this person and me are one in the same. Therefore, any critique of them reflects a critique of me. And when someone has something negative to say about them, they're saying that negative thing about me. It's like we internalize the criticism and the feedback that that person is receiving because we see ourselves as them. And so I think it's this point that really leads into the psychology behind why people become so defensive about these people they don't know. First and foremost being the cognitive dissonance that people experience when they hear negative criticism about someone that they admire. In the context of facing negative criticism about a coach or mentor that you admire, several factors contribute to the cognitive dissonance that's experienced. 
experience. You see clients or admirers of a particular coach or a particular mentor haven't just invested their time and their money in this person. A lot of the times they've also invested their emotions and their personal identity in this particular mentor, like I already mentioned, because this industry is built on a model of just copy and paste exactly what I do. And you will also be successful. Like I covered in day one of the coach Miss series. And so what happens is people build their entire identities around that of their mentor, their image, their lifestyle, their values, their work. Therefore, any negative information they receive starts to threaten this investment and their own self image. And this is what creates the dissonance. When confronted with this negative information, the idealized version they have of this person clashes with the reality that they're presented with. And this can be really uncomfortable. I mean, I remember having to come to terms with this when I came out of coaching. Like how could I have been so silly to believe the things that I thought to be true? How could these mentors and people that I idolized who I believed to be all knowing possibly be wrong? And more importantly, Importantly, what did the fact that I believe them to be correct say about me as a person? You see, belonging to a particular community can form a significant portion of a person's identity. And admitting that negative information about that identity might be true can really start to challenge large pieces of who we thought we were. And this causes us to not only become defensive, but to start to question our own identity and can lead us to questioning what it is we even believe in. I mean, we hear this story a lot in people who leave their religion or people who are ex-cult members or leave any other kind of high control group. And listen, I could go on forever in this video if we also thought about covering, you know, social media or traditional media and its role in continuing to perpetuate these behaviors. We could dive into the concept of being in an echo chamber or having certain expectations of those who we admire or even our innate desire to be a part of something bigger than ourselves. But alas, I think that's a task for another day, another series, another video entirely. My purpose with this video as a part of the Coach Miss series is to simply just get the conversation started. Why do we idolize certain people? Why do we believe that they can do no wrong? And I mean, I think there's also an interesting conversation to be had about the reverse in that when we think about people we don't like, we tend to think that everything they do is negative and that everything they say is wrong. And so I think that in itself psychologically is an interesting topic to get into as well. So much to talk about, so few hours in a day for me to make YouTube videos, especially when I'm putting out 12 videos in 12 days. I would love for you to share your thoughts in the comments down below. Thank you so much for being here and for joining in on the Coach Miss series. Coach Miss day six will be coming at you tomorrow. I'm going to leave you here today with Coach Miss day four. Take care, comb your hair, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye!